Welcome back. It is still the run-up. Uh, in case you're just joining us, we've just had a very interesting conversation around the cost of the 2023 general elections. And now we're moving on to the education sector, uh, where there's been a lot of conversations around the payment of university lecturers, you know, after the eight-month-old strike was called off last month. Uh, the Ministry of Labor has said the salaries were paid pro rata because they <laughs> cannot pay for work not done. Uh, first off, Abaya, I would like you to explain what pro rata is <laughs> for the benefit of my viewers. Okay. Pro rata simply means, you know, if, for example, if your salary is a thousand naira, you know, for 10 days, mm. it means you're getting a hundred naira per day. Yeah. Okay. So if you are paid pro rata, if you didn't come to work for 10 days, maybe you came to work for seven days, you get 700 naira. Oh. <laughs> so that, I think that's a very basic uh, explanation mm. of, of what that means. But this is a very interesting. <laughs> this is a very interesting approach. By the by, I think it's the Ministry of Labour. We do respect uh, mm. my my good friend, the Honourable Minister. <laughs> I think this is. A, I think it's by the Ministry of Labour, and I think that uh, having finally resolved somehow the ASU strike, you know, it's good to have ended it on on a on a, on a note which doesn't present one side as either having been weakened mm. or having lost face. You know, this is a cardinal principle in conflict resolution. You do not make any of the sides in the conflict resolution process look like they have lost faith, mm. a face, okay? So I think if uh, the government in good faith ought to have paid ASU the full month's salary, you know, and let them go back to school with, uh, you know, uh, motivation, more motivation, more inspiration. Uh, don't forget that there's, it's been a long drawn out process. Mm. Uh, it's been very exhaustive. The students became really psychologically and emotionally traumatized. Parents themselves became emotionally and psychologically traumatized. The academic staff themselves were not. So the whole nation was totally <laughs> exhausted by sure. this process. So I, I think that government ought to, you know, just let it. Let close the whole chapter. Don't do things that would create new wounds or make some of the old wounds to fester. And if you were paying them pro rata, I think it is just making the old wound to fester. And now we are hearing that ASU uh, has called an executive meeting, you know, and all kinds of uh, things coming up again. We want this issue resolved once and for all. Uh, and I don't think paying them pro rata is a good, is a good way of of closing this chapter. Uh, you know, when you were mentioning all the people involved that were traumatized, when you actually look at it critically, you would find out that even the academic staff, in turn, are also parents and caregivers. True. So it, it, they've, all, they've already been exhausted in many ways. I don't even want to say one way or another. In many ways, as, as a member of staff, as mm. a parent, <clears throat> and as a, as a parent looking at your children sitting at home for eight months and there is nothing you could do about it. Mm. I feel like uh, it, it, it got to a point where you know, the whole conversation lingered more than it should have. And if we we're saying, if we got to the point where we're trying to have the conversation and end it so that everybody is happy, mm -hmm. I, I choose to use that word, yeah. everybody is happy. So if you're trying to say, okay, we understand what you've been through, let's come to an understanding, then do it properly. No, absolutely. I agree. I do it properly. And, um, you know, there are, there are many, many issues around, around the strike and around the resources uh, and around, you know, the capacity of universities to pay, especially universities that are not federal government universities, you know. And um, maybe sometime in the immediate future, some of those issues will come up again. But, but definitely we need to close this chapter. And, and uh, it, <clears throat> the authorities really ought to try and ensure that, you know, this matter is resolved. Um, paying pro rata, like I said, uh, for me, is a, it's like reopening old wounds. It's like, you know, let's, let's close this chapter. Let everybody feel that, okay, it's a long drawn process, it's been resolved. And let's go back to work, <clears throat> students, lecturers, parents, even the government itself. Let everybody go back and start on a clean clean slate, you know, uh, and, I, and I, I think 
maybe on the run up we should appeal. <laughs> I think I think we can appeal to the to the authorities, you know, to 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 pay the balance and, and let this matter come to a conclusive end and let's start on a clean slate. To be having you know someone have the conversation with us again tell us the asu side of this particular end of the story <laughs> we have lawrence oshoba to have that conversation with us good morning you're welcome thank you good morning all right uh questions have come up but we're just going to let you uh give us the your own perspective and the perspective of asu on you know, this particular end of the conversation where lecturers have been paid half their salaries. How do you react to that? Well, uh, this, uh, my comment will be a personal comment, not uh, the position of ASU, because as you have known, uh, the National Executive Council of ASU are still meeting, and they are yet to give us a, 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 a position through which members can follow. Uh, I like also to correct that because I'm not an actual representative, but I'm a stakeholder. I'm a lecturer in the of Lagos. I'm just a member of the Academic Staff Union, uh, Unilab branch. Um, so all of us received that uh, uh, trickling in uh, uh, test salary, as they call it, last week, and we're all enriched because that is not, is a list of what we're expecting uh, from the government that are claimed to be sincere and they uh, are committed to the advancement of education in this country. We all know the story behind this fight, and uh, uh, it has to do with government walking away from its own negotiation that it's freely signed to, and then we have to force them back to the table. But unfortunately, uh, uh, it has to go the way it went, up to the time that the, the speaker, I know the speaker, but then we have intervened, and we talked, we had a semblance of something that is going to be reasonable, only for us to be uh, to get in this kind of uh, uh, root shock through the amputated salary that they claim to have paid to us. So we are still all in wonder why government will go that way, go that route, if indeed they claim they are looking for solutions to end the impact in the university system. Uh, we were just wondering, before you came on, uh, Uchi and I were discussing this, and uh, we were surprised, or rather intrigued, by the fact that the universities are silent because, correct me if I'm wrong, the university lecturers were hired by each university, even though there's been a collective negotiation with the federal government, because the salary scale, of course, is fixed by the federal government. But in this particular case, don't you think the universities should have a say? Why should lecturers get half pay? The universities should be responsible for that. Uh, well, as you know, Chairman is our employer. Locally, the University Government Council is an employer, but the person that called the shot is the federal government. If not, they will not have directed that somebody should be paid half across the foundation. So we all know where the box stop, the box is stop at the government table. So and the university are, are talking. I, I'm aware the committee of advanced have spoken and they have rightly advised the government that that cannot work in the university system. Because our work is not only teaching, it involves teaching, research, and community service. So not only that, I mean, uh, when we when we when we go on strike and we come back, we we continue from where, where we stop. Okay, since we resume, we have picked up the 2001 2022 academic session to so continue the session, and we have continued inspiring our PhD students and master students, and we have been doing all that. So, and you can see in the recent uh, web metric ranking of university in Nigeria, the ample period of the strike gave a lot of professors, a lot of lecturers, ample time to publish a lot of their research work. Which is that though they could not publish which improved the ranking of a lot of Nigerian universities. So, indeed, nobody can claim that we have not been working. So, and uh, concerning the issue of the university talking, the fact that we have spoken clearly well to the, to the, to the, to the system, the pro-chancellor has spoken clearly well to the system, and I think they, they know the implication of what the government is doing, and they have only advised the government. It's not for the government to do what is needful. So, uh, any any parting shots? Um, in your personal opinion, how would you? What would you like to see done to put all these issues firmly behind us, so so the country can move forward? The lecturers, the students, the parents, even the government itself. We all need to move forward. So, what should be done now? Yes, yes we are ready to move forward, and indeed we have moved forward. <laughs> we have we have returned to class, even when we are, we are not paid. We return to class, obey the government and the gentlemen agreement. 
I mean, intervention of the speaker. So we have, we, we have acted in good faith. I think our women in Nigeria should appeal to the tribal government uh, not to take uh, our, our act of good faith uh, I mean, and justify it. Because I can tell you, a lot of my colleagues are very, very angry. A lot of them are very, very angry. Uh, you don't expect us to, to come to work and come and work and then we will be paid for the work we are going to do. Mm. So I'm sure the national leadership of ASU is going to take a, 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 a decisive step concerning this issue. While we are with that, I know you, can, you must have heard what happened in the rest of Jaws, what happened in Abu, and the likes. So, I mean, pockets of those kind of, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, reaction can come in, pending the time that uh, the national leadership is going to give a comprehensive directive. But I must tell you that we are not happy. And the system should know, the fragment in particular should know, when, when we are not happy, then the system cannot work. If they want to keep the system in such a chamber, then they can continue with their uh, uh, non challenge attitude and the uh, earlier than do attitude that they have looked at this, at this issue. Whatever Asu is fighting for is for the common man and for the good of the system. I wish that your system can, your, uh, your station can come to the campus during any of our lectures, especially those last classes. Come and see the, the, the condition of the classrooms and see what students are receiving lectures. Come and see. Come and see our laboratory. Come and see a lot of things that are rotten in the system that we are trying to correct. But if they cannot, they, if they cannot do that, then they cannot inflict further pain on those of us that have taken it as a, uh, as, uh, I mean, uh, as part of our own country in the country to stay behind and nurture the system and stay in the system. They cannot, they cannot use uh, salary or hunger uh, to punish us. Of course, not that the uh, majority, if, if it's left to majority of us, they will find alternatives. I, in particular, I came from industry. I was in industry for 10 years before I came to Athens. So, I mean, so it wasn't, it isn't, it's a matter of choice to come back to the academics. It's not that we don't have something else that we can use our intellect to do. So the, 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 the fair government should have a rethink on whatever steps they are taking right now to ensure there is industrial harmony within the system. That is just my, my take. All right. Uh, thank you so uh, very much, uh, Dr. Lawrence, for coming on the run-up this morning and sharing the pers your perspective and the perspective of your colleagues. Uh, thank you so much. It was nice talking to you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. All right. It is still the run-up. Uh, the conversation will continue after we go on this quick break. But I don't know, while I was listening to him, I could hear the passion with which he was speaking. Mm. And I can almost feel the pulse of whoever else he's speaking for when he said, but I can tell you, my colleagues are very, very angry. I knew that <laughs> that anger was serious. <laughs> yes, and, and I was actually, I noted, he said, he, he in particular, he was, he was in the U.S. for 10 years and he came back home. Mm you know, of his own volition, you know. Uh, so, I mean, it, they have options. Most, these guys have options, most of them. And I don't think we should do further damage, you mm -hmm. know. Like I said, let's put this behind us. Uh, the federal government should pay them their full salaries. Let's close that chapter. Let's move on. I hope whoever takes over the helm of, you know, governance in 2023 actually pays attention to not just university education, but, you know, the education sector in the country entirely pays more attention to it. There's mm. been a lot of complaints coming out from that end of governance. I mean, mm. from the primary school level to yeah. secondary school level, even the kindergarten. I mean, that's how, where education starts from. Nobody is sure. even talking about those ones anymore. But then it's part of education. Who looks into it's a foundation. it? What's happening there? Yeah. There are lots of daycare scattered all over Nigeria. Who is in charge? Who is checking mm -hmm. out? And then you see stories on the social media, parents coming out to say, I took my child to kindergarten and this happened and that happened. I saw this on CCTV and it just dies off like that. Meanwhile, there is a whole ministry mm -hmm. that is supposed to be in charge yeah. of this, you know. But I guess that will be conversation for another day. The mm -hmm. run-up will continue.